maybe partway during the show, I will relieve you of looking at me in my fantastic uh, Garden Crusader outfit, <laughs> and you'll have a chance to ask questions of and talk with Claire Strader. Claire, um, we're here because uh, a couple weeks ago, um, I began getting fired up about this whole White House farmer idea. Tell us a little bit about how that got started. Well, the idea of a White House farm was originally put forward by Michael Pollan in an article that he wrote for the New York Times Magazine. And in that article, he addressed a number of issues that he thought were important to us as a nation in our agricultural future. And one of the ideas that he put forward towards the end of the article was the was a suggestion that we have a farm on the White House lawn. And that idea, um, and the reason thought that would be a good idea was that it could be an example for our whole country of these other issues that he was talking about in the article in terms of the same things you're talking about, local, um, regional agriculture, also organic agriculture, and also starting to change how we think about food and how we approach food in our country in terms of eating more fresh foods as well. So changing our culture around food. Um, and if we had a, a production area on the White House lawn, that was feeding the president and the Washington DC community potentially, perhaps food pantries in DC as well, that that could be a, a really tangible example for the rest of us as citizens of the US and potentially the world as well. There's some historical precedent for it with um, Eleanor Roosevelt having a victory garden on the White House lawn and actually many more presidents before that as well. Food production until our recent history has been an important part of all of our home and domestic lives, including the domestic life of the, of the president. So hopefully we're gonna switch back to that. <laughs> I, I love the idea of, um, there's been all this talk in the, uh, on, online and in, in, the, in the media about uh, Michelle Obama's muscular arm. <laughs> so we, uh, I'm sure, actually I think the family, uh, I would guess would get a pretty good kick out of you know, Barack mm -hmm. and Michelle and Malia and her sister going out and doing a little gardening at night mm -hmm. and getting other people involved. That's, that's one of the things that I love about gardening. It's not only what you see and you plan and you grow, but it's all the other benefits. Uh, to me, it's spiritual and social and recreational and uh, it's a way to make friends. Um, there are just so many things that you get out of watching something grow out of the ground from a seed that turns into something you can eat and mm -hmm. nourishes you and mm -hmm. it's just it's a wonderful thing. I think that's especially important for kids too. Um, we as as the farmer at Troy Community Farm which is part of this nonprofit on the north side of town the land is called Troy Gardens we've got a bunch of programs that happen there and one of the programs is the kids garden. Um, and Nathan, Nathan Larson is the education director and the coordinator for the Kids Garden. And he tells a story about how miraculous it is to, to see kids come to the Kids Garden and plant the carrot seeds, um, for instance, and grow those carrots and weed them and then be able to pu actually pull them out of the ground and eat them and how they, how kids are so much more interested in eating a vegetable that they really participated in growing. And in many cases, and I've seen this happen at the farm many times as well, with teenagers, not so much younger kids, who say they really hate tomatoes or whatever the crop is, but if they are participating in growing it, they will, they'll eat it and enjoy it in a way that, not, that none of us expected. I've, I've seen kids that begin to eat tomatoes, especially those little tomatoes, just yeah. like candy, mm -hmm. especially when they've grown them. And that's the fun part. 